So AJ got cut open on the stage. He did? He was walking out, and his face got sliced up, and boy, he was angry. Mm-hmm. As noted, Boogs was injured. He tried. And it's funny, because they actually did a spot in the ladder match on NXT 2.0 where uh, Solo Sokoa tried to do the same spot, where he's got one guy up in Samoan drop, which, by the way, I hate this spot because it's so contrived. It's like you got one guy up, and then the other guy runs over and leaps on the guy's shoulders. Yeah. It was so dumb. And in both cases, Solo Sokoa collapsed, but he didn't get hurt. And Boots collapsed, but he did get hurt. But that, so, that's the thing. It takes well, too long. It okay. looks like crap, unless you're big. And I'm sorry, I just want to throw this out. There's a reason that football teams have stopped doing the dead carry a lot of the times. It's because of that reason. It is completely, again, there's a lot of spots that are completely insane. That's one that, again, very, they are just pulling it out too often with guys that just think they're a lot stronger than they really are. All right, so we had that. And then as noted in the beginning of the show, Pat Buck quit. He was the uh, guy who, he was an agent, and if you recall, like, way back when they started using Adam Pierce more, uh, Pat Buck, I think I think they might have been considering him for the role, because, like, he was all over TV for a short period of time, and then they uh, they decided they were going to use Adam Pierce instead. But uh, Pat Buck quit, and, uh, you know, the story I was told, you ever know how you, you hear stories? <laughs> mm-hmm. Do I need so to talk about business. Rhonda? Mm-hmm. I'll give you that in a minute, but the story <laughs> I was told was, uh, I mean, I don't want to say the job sucks, okay, but these these agents, all of them, they work Raw and SmackDown. So, like, most, you know, the vast majority of the wrestlers, except for, like, the women's tag or whatever, I mean, they, they work Raw and then they go home, or they work SmackDown and then they go home. But all of the agents, they they have to fly in, they have to work Raw, and then they, they're home for like a second, and they have to fly back, and they have to work SmackDown. And then they have to fly, and they have to... So anyway, the story I got was just like, it was just too much. Like, never home, always there, and he just had enough, and he quit. So that was Pat Buck. It's now, a thankless job, man. I must say, I must say something about Ronda, mm-hmm. okay? Which, by the way, Pat Buck was the agent for, apparently, the both main events on both nights. Some people don't understand how this whole uh, reporting thing works in... Right and wrong, okay? Listen. I have friends who are friends with Rhonda, okay? And they've they've been talking to me about Rhonda since she came to WWE, all right? I was told that Rhonda was furious that she was not main eventing WrestleMania, okay? I didn't say she almost quit. I saw stories all over the place about... I never said any of that, Okay. I was told that she was furious about it, and she left the Hall of Fame on Friday night and did come back Saturday and ended up doing the match, all right? Rhonda then did a post and said she was honored to work underneath Stone Cold Steve Austin, and she said that the reason that she left the Hall of Fame was because, I guess, she had to put her baby to bed, or I remember what this, it was her baby. Okay, well, you know what the story is? That's the story. The story is that her friends, friends of hers, told me that she was furious about it. She says she wasn't furious about it. That's the story. Which one is right? Which one is wrong? Where's the truth in all of this? I don't know. But I'm telling you what happened. So that's it. If you want to say that I was wrong, no one should be calling Rhonda a liar. There's no lying going on here. There's no stories being made up. There's two sides to this story. And you can decide which side you want to believe. That's it. Observer Live. I'm your host, Brian Alvarez. Joined, of course, by Big Vinny V. Hi, Brian. Craig. Hello. Lance Storm. Is that a towel? Craig, uh, legit looks like Julius Caesar. Yeah, I did my my hair down. Oh, really? Uh, Wow. Seems like we got a lion loose in in, uh, Lance's house, coincidentally. Yeah. <laughs> is Lance, that a Lance, puma? Lance brought the yeah. jungle beast. I was hoping Bridger would come along to either feed me these grapes or wave me with one of those big fans, but when I suggested this, she was surprisingly negative. What? Why? I didn't like that idea one bit. Why? Oh my god, Vinny, please. Mm. Make sure you take that outfit to Hawaii and get video of you running down the beach in it. Oh, bro, oh. this thing's going everywhere with me. It's awesome. All right, here we go. I couldn't take a big one. Ugh. Mm. 
grapes. Excuse me. Look who's here. Vinny, hand her them grapes. I have the greatest wife. She's going to give me a couple of grapes. Not too many. I'm on a low-carb diet. <laughs> like all Romans. <laughs> have you ever eaten a grape before? It's not alive. I've never fed a grape. Thank you, love. I appreciate it. I'll take one more. No, I won't. Oh, God, she's really... Hey! One more. Suck it off! Hey, we're not having a food fight in here. God damn it. <laughs> Grapes all over the floor. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.